Um, so as um, let's go deep into sure. Bonnie's highlight. That is EABL. Yeah. Um, EABL released their half year, half year results for the year ended December 2021. Um, that must have been on the 27th of January uh, on Thursday. Of- yeah. That, no, that's when they announced it okay yeah so we saw i mean interesting interesting results very good positive positive outlook we saw 131 percent um that is increase in the pat profit after tax uh went to around 8.7 billion uh you know big money that one eh? then we saw of course an increase in their net um sales uh went up by around uh, 23 percent yeah which which is a good uh, 54.9 b Wow, yeah. wow, 50 yeah. billion yeah, the numbers. Yeah. numbers. Yeah. So yeah. this is EABL. As we know, EABL uh, is in three regions. In That is Nairobi. That is, sorry, not Nairobi. <laughs> that is, of course, they're in Nairobi. That is Kenya, Uganda, yeah. and of course, Tanzania. There is the Uganda Breweries, and then there is the Kenya Breweries Limited. So these are part of the East African Breweries. Um, a number of issues that we saw there. So, of course, the positive outlook and um, people who are holding mm. EABL mm. must be smiling, mm, 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 you know, because yeah. of, of the dividends that was given. Especially after the interim dividend, yeah. uh, 3.75 uh, per share. Yeah. Which is really good. I think one of the highest I've seen. Huh? Yeah, which, which is really good for the interim. So, we can only expect... Uh, Maybe around six shillings yes, at, yeah. final, at final following yeah. the release of financial year June yeah. 2022 results. Because because in twenty in twenty twenty and also in twenty twenty there was no there was no interim dividend. Yeah. Uh, we saw that the last time they issued an interim dividend was um, for the half year ended uh, December of yeah. uh, tw- of 2019 yeah. and i think they must have regretted that decision uh, shortly after that because covid hit in uh, the first quarter of 2020 mm. and many companies you know during the pandemic have been really trying to to preserve cash yeah. uh, because of of the uncertainty well, i think they could they could they could take on um the giving out of the dividends at the time when they did because it didn't adversely affect them yeah. if you looked at the 2020 performance didn't adversely affect them so i th- right now uh for these results half year results yeah. i have we we i watch a conversation between um what do you call him your good friend oh julian samboko yeah Julius, he Julius, interviewed Julius, uh, the Rispa, cfo cfo yeah, yeah. Rispa, Rispa ganga uh, so Rispa was saying that um because the future is a bit more predictable than it was last year or a similar period last year um they have more confidence with regards to um issuing dividends because they can see where they're going and this the, the performance is, is is back up because if you look at um their the unit economics the the margins the product margins were, were affected yeah, they, they, and they've, yeah? they've they've gone up actually the the margins the back at 48 over 48 yeah that's crazy margins man it's good like to you, you use 100 if, if you if you use use how much how do i put it use 48 shillings to make 100 is it no, over 100 shillings in mm-hmm. sales, you make a profit of 48 shillings. Yeah. That's very good margin, yeah. right? So during the corona period, of course, um, due to um, increase in marketing expenses, all that, the margins went down. But now um, that they've covered that, they're past that. Even in Uganda, um, there were some restrictions. Which yeah, been, this uh, we week have, we saw yeah, the government of yeah. Uglanda so things actually really, lifted that. As you said, the outlook is, is looking good. Yeah. Really and, good. And we have to know that this is actually the, it's, it's the highest, yeah. um, one of the highest profits. in It's, it's a five-year high, actually. Uh, yeah, five-year interim uh, profit after tax. Yeah. yeah, which is really good. And yesterday I had the chance of congratulating um, the EABL team uh, in person. I was at the at the Muthaiga Golf Club, um, the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce had organized mm. uh, a golf tournament. So I was there um, on Friday, Do that you is play golf? 20th. No, um, I commentate golf uh, just as I commentate all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> business business activities. Now, and, and I had a conversation with them and something stood out for me. And the thing that stood out is the fact that their the marketing strategy, okay? Because if you look at the, at the, at the, at the um, advertising and distribution cost, it yeah. went up by 24%. Yeah. And that was one of my key questions, you know, to yeah. try and understand that. And I had a conversation with, with the team at EABL and if you look at their advertising, so they are, they are more and more moving out of the mainstream uh, media advertising and all that. Yeah. And they've taken up a, 
a, a, a component that have that they've really iterated it and this is to do with um, influencer marketing so if you look at a lot of influencers in Kenya and uh, and you go to their Instagram you'll see paid partnership paid with yeah. the Hashtag, you know, paid hashtag, partnership yeah. with the ABL. Exactly. Yeah. And you find that you know actors, you know celebrities, musicians, they're all getting this Disney advertising task whether it's gene whether it's whatever. And that model is 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 actually working very well for them because I mean you you you're seeing the results. Mm. And key to this is you find that, um, and, and this this came from the interview with with Rispa, um, the CFO of VABL, that you look at their growth, and you find that Kenya uh, grew by the 27 percent. Mm -hmm. You had Uganda at around I think eighteen percent, and okay. then fifteen okay. percent in Tanzania. And I'm just looking at the Kenyan component, and uh, in a cheeky way, you could say that music has really <laughs> helped the Kenyan component because it's the highest. You know, yeah, uh, the yeah. the Kilam to Akonapombe hit songs and all that. They yeah. they probably did <laughs> did a lot of uh, of, of favor to EABL yeah, um, yeah. because that's of course speaks to 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 consumption. But Easter, you've mentioned about how yeah Uganda breweries yeah. No, they have we, been affected. No, not Uganda breweries. Um, they, I mean, they were Uganda, affected that, because that, of the that, lockdown, yeah, which yeah. was lifted this week. Yeah. You know, it's been there for, I think, around 20 months. Yeah. And Uganda still grew by 17% more than Tanzania. 18. Uh, by, eight, 18. by 18% oh, more despite despite than Tanzania. The despite yeah. the lockdown. Yeah. So you can imagine they probably would have surpassed Kenya. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. Kenya Kenya's growth is being supported by the reopening Bill of Bill. bars. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think uh, oh. in Q2 2021. Yes. Uh, so yeah. so that's why we're seeing a 27% uh, growth in net sales. And also yeah. the the curfew that that was lifted because that was yeah. a big hindrance to mm. to revelers yeah. and mm. and of course the the closing times for for bars. Yeah. But so, you see, you see the thing is the two um selling more, most moving products of EABL in this market, the Kenyan market is um what do you call it? The hydrogen the hard drinks and then there's this beer and liquor the spirits spirits the spirits yeah oh god there's beer and liquor clearly i'm not a drinker <laughs> oh god but yeah um so beer was affected the mm -hmm. consumption wasn't so good yeah it was adversely affected during the lockdown by the lockdown and by the restrictions about clo uh, closure of bars and all that but um spirits was spirit resilient to, yeah yeah so being that that is what supports the market mostly and actually the growth in africa was um th there was a report issued by by diageo and there was uh performance by by continent mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. there was africa europe and all that europe i think the what was supporting europe was some some premium brand i don't know i don't need its name i forget the name but then in in africa yeah kenya was the was was what was the country that um spurred this growth the most and what led to that was diaj not diaj gilbis in kenya now oh, Gilbys. Gilbys. Yeah, yeah Gil Gilbys has right. been doing really really well in 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 Kenya. Yeah. Um, that is the gene. And of course, you look at during the COVID period, uh EABL they extended, you know, mm -hmm. their line of products, yeah. you know, the introduction of of new genes, you know, the ones with flavors, those varieties. So that introduction yeah. of new products has also contributed, you yeah. know, to yeah. to this growth yeah. um that we are seeing. And but, even speaking about Gilbys mm -hmm. um, and, and correlating that to the conversation you you you, you started yeah. about marketing. Yeah. Um, the thing is, um, East African breweries and let's say Diageo yeah. generally okay. uses a lot of experience. Uh, for, for us listeners who don't know, Diageo is the parent company uh, of EABL. Yeah. There's Diageo, there's East African breweries, then now Kenya, KBL. Yeah. Kenya, Kenya, Kenya breweries limited. But yeah, we're speaking about East African breweries. So um, with regards to that, the Gilbys, uh -huh. um, the marketing that EAB, the marketing strategy that EABL has decided to go with that yeah. has really been paying fruit. And you have to remember that this is an F FMCG. Yeah, um, fast moving consumer. Yeah, yeah. so uh, marketing is very key if you are to increase sales. You snooze, right? you lose. Exactly. That's why you cannot afford to save. And I'm so happy when I hear Rispa, who is the CFO. You know, the CFO is the one who's usually like, no, that's too much money for her. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> CFO ni watiaji. I mean, finance guys don't take risks. Uh, that's, just the, nah, nah. that's just that's just that's how it is. No, it's, it's it's a perception. So, so before I before I, I lose my track of thought, yeah. Um, so experiential marketing has really been working working for them because yeah. um, you see with events like Oktoberfest, mm -hmm. that is purely experiential marketing. Yeah. So you you use an emotive bit of it. You give uh, your consumers um, the the feel of the vibe, yeah. which is through those events and through mm -hmm. the people they mm -hmm. rely on for decision making. Not rely on per se, but they. Influencers use or they, they influence people's yeah. decisions. Right? You know, I, I had not I, I think I was underscoring yeah. the impact of Oktoberfest mm. 
you know in 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 these results because this is this is the half year ended december and october first comes in in october and definitely this that that, that, that they, that they were not performing there. so well until no 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 october. i mean it's it's an important it's an important component sure, sure. i mean if if I, i i i don't know about the numbers of october first yeah. but for me i see it as a very big thing that if probably you were to remove it, the results will definitely not be the same that we are seeing today what do you think bonnie yeah. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's 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 true what you're saying yeah because these are uh, half year results for yeah. 31st December 2021 so mm. I think Q2 2021 onwards we yeah. had a uh, lifting of most of the restrictions so revelers could be out there yeah. and I think this is what EBL has stepped on to sure mm-hmm. well you see what October first those one of events like October first corona those are what you call base effects right Yeah. So that oh, sorry not corona but lifting of the curfew and and Yeah, yeah, yeah. for a moment I thought we were talking about corona the the liquor because there corona, is there is oh, a brand known as uh, <laughs> but I don't know if it's no, part no, of the right. Diageo umbrella. No that's right. Uh no but Diageo actually imports um premium brands yes. from Europe and yes. that's why it, they have some forex um effects on, on, their, on their financials. Yeah. But yeah, where was I headed with that? So first of all on the forex issue yeah. that that's that's a big risk for EABL because they've been taking a hit on that you look at these premium brands i mean tangeri what 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 yeah. so they import those because of course they're not they're not being produced in in in, in ruaraka yeah. so when they import and currently the kenyan shilling is taking a beating so when they import that yeah. you know that forex entity really goes against them you know unlike the likes of BAT and and, and yeah, others yeah, so yeah. the currency is a very important important component for EABL and now going into the elections it makes me a bit worried because previously we've seen that the Kenyan shilling you know tends to take a during beating elections. during electioneering yeah. years so that 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 is a risk that I that I see in that space and and what, what do you, where where do you think the Kenyan shilling is headed um uh, i i'm sticking with bloomberg bloomberg gave a prediction that uh by the time we'll be getting to august of this year that is the electioneering month the kenyan shilling will be at 111 shillings against the dollar mm. and uh, i think speak, i think it's be there. yeah so i think we're so going that's to that's yeah, around august it's a positive yeah. outlook it's not a positive outlook it's just the reality that's where we're going why why i i it's um do you uh, I mean it's 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 self explanatory the fact that it's an electioneering year I mean people don't have conf- a lot of confidence in the market based on our history currently the we are trading at 113 yeah. to the dollar yeah then in in to in the August. Fu- near future it's going to be 111 One, 117 oh yeah because oh, yeah. that was like How is that oh, not a good no, thing? No no no, it's going up. Chief. Okay. It's okay. not it's not All it's right. not coming down. I was uh, you know as as I was looking at the report um for me you know I I normally lo- like looking for areas of concern. Eh? Mm-hmm. So the cost of sales was was one you know it's up by 13% but then I realized ah, the margins was up so ah, it's okay let me yeah. not bother about that. Yeah. For me the one thing that that I'm really concerned about is the administration cost because it went up by 18%. Okay this is admin cost let people be paid at okay. least no 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 <laughs> at least try and keep it in tandem with at least keep it below the inflation rate okay around 6% uh, yeah i mean uh, so so that's a component that probably i need more explanation on mm. um, or because as it stands i'm a bit worried about that because if if you make that consistent that your admin cost grows <laughs> every year by mm. by double digit uh, 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 mm. that's yeah. a risk But you see that's where you find marketing expenses right no 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 sg and a Market, marketing expenses. expenses is actually under 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 um, distribution Underwear. and advertising which was up by 24% which is very much okay no, the whole the thing if you, if you look at the income statement mm-hmm. you have the sales or revenue you have the cost of sales then you have the generally it summarizes as selling general and, dis- and administrative cost so it, it's one area so unless they broke it down from selling general cost then administration yeah they 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 they, they broke it down okay so All this right. admin cost is the one that is making me a bit ish ish but i i saw that the market received this very well received the results very well i think there was a 3.87% increase in in you know in the in the price of eabl the stock yeah. at the yeah. nairobi securities exchange was well received um that's Bo- at the close of friday yes that was the close of friday uh boni you hold the counter um i uh, know i think easter you hold the counter eh? good I, dividends coming eh? yeah <laughs> uh, so so what 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 uh, what are you guys expecting in terms of the final dividend 
In terms of final dividend, I I am putting it at around six six shillings. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing from from the numbers I checked, uh, they paid around eight point five financial year 2019. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. And and they had done three shillings for the interim in 2019. Yeah, in, in 2020. In 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 2019, year ended December. Yeah. Half year ended December. Yeah. They did three Kenya shillings interim dividend and then now they went ahead and did eight yeah, at the close five. of the year yeah. so they might even do more than more than six yeah on top of the no i think six is, six is a good um they might estimation. they might i mean because look the at conditions it. are not quite the same at the moment they've gone through COVID. they are more wary of um, maintaining their reserves they Mar- can't go all out and pay margins are up like profit is up 131 <laughs> percent uganda but, is opening but, but uganda uh, is opening uh, a general yeah. election is looming uh, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you got Thinking me the first half. So, excited, huh? <laughs> so maybe six percent. Yeah, uh, final six dividend. Yeah, maybe end, around uh, uh, six. Um, seven. I mean six shillings. Sorry. Six shillings. Six shillings. Six shillings. Six shillings seven shillings. Mm. Around that. Yeah. Oh, good. So maybe another interesting pointer for me was uh, contribution to government revenue. Yeah. ABL is contributing about forty-five uh, b in terms of excise tax and corporate income taxes yeah so uh i'm interested to find out how does it compare with the likes of safaricom in terms of contribution to government um of course so by a long shot high. safaricom is the yes. largest taxpayer uh-huh. in kenya yeah. but when it comes to the issues of excise you know um when you look at of course the the composition and percentages abl pays a lot of excise you know, yeah. because of the alcohol products that they have on their counter, BAT as well pays BAT a lot of excise well, yeah. tax. And uh, there was the issue of revision of um, the excise duty. They're adjusting it to inflation. That was in uh, October, November, the last quarter of yeah. 2021. I remember we discussed it in the podcast. There are talks, there are talks to make the revision of the excise duty twice in a, in a year? Yeah, in a year. by annual. And uh, Dan Kalia is one of the biggest, biggest, uh, I don't want to say haters, um, he really disagrees with that adjustment for inflation yeah. because he says that if you want to adjust excise duty, for example, uh, a packet of cigarette, a packet of cigarette itself this year costs 20 shillings. Yeah. In With inflation, it's going to cost a bit more, you know, 6% to that. So inflation is already adjusted to it in the product. Okay. So why would you want to adjust inflation in the excise duty? Again, in the excess tax. Yeah, but yeah. but of course there's a whole formula that KRA uses and Treasury uses to do that. That probably might, might be um, a special podcast on itself. Yeah. But I mean, I just want to say this. This is probably a bit outside of, of it's of course outside the ABL, but this is a strong feeling that I have. We need a tax policy in this country. Mm-hmm. The Treasury and KRA they really really misuse. Uh, they really misuse excise duty. Because they put it in almost every component. You know, the nature of excise duty is to discourage people from using us, to, to sort of regulate the consumption of, of some certain products, you yeah. know. Yeah. But then when you put it on, on fuel, imports of spaghetti, even fuel. you know, you, so what, what is happening? We have excess duty in fuel. And, and you do know why we are doing that? We are doing that because we don't have an outlined tax policy. Ukuri Atani promised that he'll bring a tax policy. But uh, that is yet to that is yet to be done because that that breeds in predictability and confidence of an investor. Because as I've said earlier, business people who are on a casa, you know, when it gets to around May, yeah. on a casa because you don't know that a certain thing might be introduced in the finance bill and you're yeah. out of business. Yeah. Mm. No, are they? I would ask you this. Huh? Are they? Do you feel like we keep revising the excess duty because of um, lack of of what do you call it? Uh, tax policy or is it because the whole KRA thing or treasury is in a, on a firefighting mode that is they're about to read a budget that like but the, the deficit is just too much yeah we have to squeeze water out of stone exactly and therefore you look for um you you, you start looking for any opportunity of introducing such tax i'm looking at if we had an outlined policy. tax policy yeah you wouldn't now mess around trying to squeeze people because it's well outlined and it's known and it's predictable. Let's say, you see like right now, the way we are discussing whether it should be biannual or what or what, yeah. these are things that should be outlined in the tax policy. So yeah. if you are sitting as as the CFO of VABL, mm. you can make your plans, mm. okay? And know that this and this will happen this way. But then they are able to squeeze what out of the rock, quote unquote, yeah. simply because it's it's there's no plan. It's a, it's a scattered avenue. Yeah, yeah. yeah what I call it, firefighting. Yes. So in short, actually that's so true. Um, it even discourages investors. 
like from getting into the market. Yeah.